NAD is obviously something we've known about in the scientific community for years and years, but within the longevity and biohacking space, over the last you know couple of years, it's really become a buzzword. And a lot of people are talking about it, but actually a lot of people are really confused by the science behind it. Like what actually is it for? So I, I spent a lot of time <laughs> talking about this and in, in teaching people because it's really important that we understand, you know, how it's actually working in our body and what it's actually doing. But basically it's a natural molecule and it's, it's found in every single cell in our body. And it's actually critical for hundreds of different reactions in our cells. But the two things that it's really important for are firstly, as you just mentioned, in our mitochondria. So NAD is part of the Krebs cycle, which is the pathway in our cells that literally helps to take glucose from our food and turn it into ATP, which is the energy currency of our cells. So it's absolutely critical for cellular energy production. Literally, if we didn't have NAD in our bodies, we'd be dead in 30 seconds because this respiration just simply wouldn't happen. So I guess that's the thing it's always been famous for. But the second thing that has been discovered a lot more recently is the fact that NAD actually acts as a fuel for a lot of cellular maintenance and repair processes in our body. So we know constantly in our cells, our cells are suffering from all sorts of damage, you know, everything from damaged proteins to damaged DNA. Well, there is like an army of repair enzymes that are going around making sure this is all fixed without us even knowing about it, like our DNA repair enzymes, things like this. And NAD is actually being found to act like a fuel for these enzymes. So it powers them to make sure that they can do this repair. And so they're, they're the sort of two things it's famous for. And as a general rule of thumb, all you really need to remember is if you have high levels of NAD, you are getting lots of energy production, lots of repair, which is good for your cells. But if NAD is low, then energy production is not as efficient. Your repair is not as efficient. You start to see things like tiredness, fatigue, cellular damage, so that's kind of where it plays its important role. But the link with aging is because it's actually been found to decline with age, as many things do. Um, NAD has also been found to decline quite significantly. It's estimated that it halves every 20 years. And this is from birth. So even by the time we're 20, we've lost half our NAD. By the time we're 40, it's halved again. And then obviously this means lack of cellular energy damage. And this contributes to a lot of the sort of signs and symptoms of the cellular processes that are driving aging. 